Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be doing a palette sign with a wood carving in the center. I'll take you from concept, drawing, design, all the way to the finished product. I might even break out my gouges. Come on over to the workbench. Let's get started. Here we are in the garage and I'm laying out these boards to give me a background for the sign. Now I'm going to make two signs and I've measured across this way and I've measured across this way and it looks like I can get a circle that's two foot six inches both in this direction and in this direction so I'll be making a basically a square and then and then uh, we'll circle it and cut it out now you can see where I intentionally place these boards to where I don't have two light boards really close together or two dark boards really close together and I'll go over these and make sure that the gaps in between in between these boards is not too bad I've changed out this board several times anywhere where there's a gap until I can get it fairly close if it's I can always take a plane and you can see where this board here is a little bit wider on this side I could take that down to it doesn't have to be tight uh, because it's a rustic sign but you don't want a really big gap in it. It'll just be distracting. So what we have here is I've measured both directions down the center of this square. I made sure that I could get a circle out of this. I'll be able to take this Sharpie and draw a circle all the way around. Take a jigsaw and cut it out. All right, here's a quick tip. If you're working with pallet wood, it's gonna have nails and things in it. And if you wanna get those out, I use a saw and I cut this side so the nails are often cut flush with the board. And they can be difficult to get out. A spring-loaded punch. So this is spring-loaded. It puts pressure, as you can see, it'll put a divot into the wood, go to the back of those nails, give them a couple, couple of these little hits with this thing, and it'll loosen those nails right up to where you can get a, a hammer on it and pull them on out. This has saved me so much time. Once I learned this, that was a happy camper. Here you see I have the sign cut out into the shape, a circular shape. And I used a, I have a Bosch jigsaw and that worked out beautifully. So as I mentioned, this, uh, this sign is uh, a sign that I've been commissioned to do and they wanted flames on the sign. They wanted a, the cross knives of a chef, a chef's hat, and a skull wearing the chef's hat. And this phrase, which is typical of a, a chef, is in place is is everything in its place being organized having everything prepared and everything in its place I love that saying so let me show you some of the designs I've come These up are rough sketches that I've shared with my client and um, and I didn't quite like the way this was was laid out and so I've tried a few other things here. Um, I like the knives 
below the center of attention here, but I felt like this needed more emphasis. And so I've done a few others here. Now, when you're doing, I, I had a pretty good uh, idea of what he wanted. Uh, communication is key when you're doing a sign for somebody. Uh, he's one, a good friend of mine, but we were back and forth chatting about uh, what he was looking for and what he wanted, and, and it's key. It is key that you do these, these sketches. Now, if I was doing purely out of my own imagination, I would have it much more varied. At least 50 of these little sketches on this uh, art print or newsprint, very thin, you can buy it, it's very cheap. <clears throat> I, I fold the, the pages up, you can see that they're creased. And I use that as my area where I put the design. I'll do 50 of them at least if I'm coming up with my own design for a client, show them. So when they get it, they're happy, they have what they want. There's no, uh, you know, wondering why, why they do this or I'd rather have that. I keep them informed along the way of the design as well. All right, I got my uh, two circles cut out of the pallet wood and this is just a pine board that's gonna be a banner. It's cut out on the, I just sketched it with a pencil, put it on the bandsaw, and everywhere that there's pencil marks shaded is where I'll go in with gouges. So this part looks like it's underneath, this part looks like it's underneath that, this looks like it's underneath that. So it's like a wavy banner. And I'll do that for both of them. Both these signs are going to be uh, alike. They're going to be the same. One's going to be for the person that commissioned me to do it, and the other's going to be a gift. All right. Since I shot nails through the back, and they were slightly longer, I had to snip them off. I sanded it. So now everything's nice and flush, and I'm going to uh, use some American antique American stain and uh, I'll come back tomorrow once it's dry and give it another sanding. Now the neat thing about staining a bunch of different colored boards is right now they look very separate they don't look like they belong but as you go across with the same color and lay this transparent stain over top of all these different boards, it, it unifies it, it brings it together, it makes it look like one piece because this specific tint, this tone is over top of everything. Even though each board's different, they look like they belong together. I just love how this comes together like this. So this is how I go about laying out the sign. And I'm glad I talked about staying in constant contact with your client because 
When I asked any last minute changes, decided to remove the skull. And, uh, and this is gonna be the new layout with, with flames. So you can see how important it is. So what I have here is just um, cardboard off the back of a tracing pad. <clears throat> and I sketch it out so I can move it around. And I have an eraser here, and, and so I'm constantly making adjustments and erasing and redrawing. Um, I decided to make the band a little bit smaller. I had what I think is a little too flat here. Um, and so I'm adding this piece on it to add a little bit more height. This is the banner. I cut that out on a scroll saw. Um, the knives, I really didn't know. I don't know that much about uh, professional kitchen knives. So I simply took one out of my knife block and laid it down and traced it onto paper. And I will be able to trace that onto the piece of wood. And so that's our next step. I'm going to trace this on to a piece of wood and we're going to cut it out on the bandsaw. All right, here we're getting ready to cut out the hat. And this is just uh, pine, it's clear pine. And you can listen as the saw is cutting here. And as I round the corner, you'll hear a, a lower pitch of whirl. Not the teeth cutting through the wood, which is a higher pitch sound, but the lower pitch Oral that you'll you'll hear are the bearings trying to support the blade and keep it moving straight as I'm twisting the blade as I twist the wood it torques that blade a little bit what you want to make sure you do when you hear that sound is be consistent you want a, a, a consistent even tone and then you'll know Listen to that. That was it. that was no pressure, no curves. The straight cuts like this. <clears throat> you'll hear it cutting, but as you do a curve, you'll hear that those bearings kind of whining a little bit. When you hear those bearings, you want to just make sure that it's a smooth, consistent. If you hear that thing really starting to uh, scream, you'll know you're putting way too much torque and you simply need a thinner blade to make that curve. So here we go, the hat's cut out, and you notice it's clear with no knot holes, because we're going to be carving on it, we don't want any knot holes. And here's what I always do, I lay it out, our next step here is to carve. So this is the time to move things around, make sure it looks good to your eye. 
hope you like this video. Please like, share, subscribe. Next time we're going to carve and paint flames. This is this is my favorite part. This is my favorite part about making signs. So stop by next time. We'll be doing some carving and painting. And I'll see you next time.